Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, Joe Biden beat Donald Trump in the 2020 presidential election by more than 7 million votes, 306 to 232 in the Electoral College. This is the hard, inescapable, ineradicable fact that Donald Trump and his followers have never been able to accept to this day. That was the cause of the, uh, the riots and the violent insurrection and the attempted political coup that took place on January 6th. Donald Trump's refusal to accept what took place. The political scientists tell us that the hallmarks of an authoritarian or fascist political party are that one, they do not accept the results of democratic elections that don't go their way. Two, they refuse to renounce or they openly embrace political violence as an instrument. What's the matter with this? Something wrong with the sign? It's a lot about the law. <laughs> they hold Israel accountable. They accept. They, they They're worse than Jan 6. Hold Israel accountable. Israel is not above the law. They, they accept. I'm sorry. Let me, let me just start that again. That authoritarian and fascist parties that don't accept democratic process and the rule of law. They reject the results of democratic elections that don't go their way, number one. And number two is they embrace political violence as an instrument for obtaining political power. Now, okay, uh, I, I, for, forgive us for the interruption. These are uh, hard times, obviously. We're in defense of democracy and human rights and peace all over the world. That's what we stand for, and that's why we're together here today. Um, my friends, um, I just want to say this. Uh, the struggle that began on January 6th in this building continues to this day. Donald Trump is out there. Donald Trump is out there saying that he will issue a pardon to the more than 700 people who were convicted of participation in the violent insurrection against the union. So there are people who've been convicted of assaulting federal officers, people convicted of seditious conspiracy, which means conspiracy to overthrow the government, um, people convicted of destroying federal property, and so on. Donald Trump is saying that he is going to pardon all of these people, and he means it. We must take him at his word. He's already pardoned a whole bunch of political criminals like Paul Manafort, like Michael Flynn, like Roger Stone, like Dinesh D'Souza, like Steve Bannon. These people form the inner core of the Donald Trump for president campaign in 2024. And what he's saying is that he will release and pardon these political shock troops who are willing to commit violence in the name of the Trump party. So um, I'm delighted to be joined by several colleagues from Congress who are here. One of them, Eleanor Holmes Norton, represents the people of Washington, D.C. And it was my great honor to stand with Eleanor Holmes Norton uh, as a floor leader for D.C. statehood in the last Congress, where the House of Representatives voted to approve admission of Washington, D.C. as a new state uh, to the Union. And when we started that process, I said I wanted to thank the people of Washington, 713,000 tax-paying, draftable U.S. citizens who have a real valid political grievance, not a counterfeit, phony political grievance, but did not come down here and beat the daylights out of 150 of our police officers who did not come down here and try to overthrow the Constitution. 